the big winner for me, if I had to choose, the big winner for me, here's me looking through my notes again, <laughs> just to remind myself. As a matter of fact, that's that's what I will say is, so yeah, I watched the, the, um, I watched the event three times. The first time, again, was just mad scribbling, uh, rushing to write down as many notes as I can while still paying attention. The second time was trying to pick up on any notes that I may have missed, any announcements and dates and other little clues here and there. And then the final time was just watching it. So I can say for sure that by the third time when they're announcing the new Square Enix games, the two games at the end there, I didn't even bother watching it again. I just went back and rewrote or checked over my notes to see if there was anything I was missing. I wasn't really paying attention to any of those, the, the last two games, the, the Dio Field or the Dio Field Chronicle and Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie Elysium. I didn't even watch them again. It just, nothing looked exciting to me on those games. Hello, I'm James. I play games. Today, though, I'm just going to talk about games because the state of play that just aired a couple hours ago at this point, I want to have a chance to react and discuss some things about it. I have been a PlayStation fanboy forever, so a state of play is something to look forward to all the time. In the descriptions, it was only expected to be about 20 minutes with a focus on games from Japanese developers, so expectations have been set there. There are no news about hardware, PS5 or PS4, and specifically PSVR 2. No news and updates about that. It's just going to be games. Without further ado then, let's chat. And so it, this time it was quite a short one. Uh, I think expectations were quite tampered this time. No updates on PSVR 2, so there was not going to be any announcements about VR. I, I had the assumption that they weren't going to talk about the current PSVR either, so nothing to expect there. I was curious to know if there was... I mean, I was watching the chat as the uh, countdown was going on. A lot of people, obviously, with their hopes and wishes for uh, remakes and you know, remasters set to come out. There was lots of suggestions, and I saw a lot of Final Fantasy, some Resident Evil, some Silent Hill, Bloodborne was suggested, Hogwarts Legacy somehow came up, uh, even though I don't think that's a foreign IP, uh, so I, I don't know how that came up, but I'm sure it was just, you know, personal wish. And my first thought was, I hope, yes, remakes and revivals, uh, renaissance for previous games would be nice, but I also really, really hope that there was something new. Just some new IPs, some new gameplay, some new footage, anything new. No more remakes and remasters, at least for a little while. I I'm ready to see something new. Without further ado, let's just jump right in. The first game that got announced, Exo Primal, due 2023, so next year for the PS4 and PS5. Exo Primal, I kept writing, <laughs> I, for some reason I wrote down Left 4 Dead with dinosaurs and robots, and I think that perfectly explains it. Uh, it was um, dinosaurs coming through a vortex in the trailer anyways. There was a, a vortex, a black hole, uh, inverted black hole if you will, where dinosaurs were just pouring out. On, on a personal note, Dinosaurs being, if, if they were actual dinosaurs falling from that height, they technically shouldn't have survived. So I don't know, it's something about that just physics-wise did not make sense to me. Uh, I, I, I digress from that point though. But anyways, the dinosaurs were coming through in what looks like a futuristic city. I think it said year 2043. And the characters that you were playing were being suited up in mechs and robots. Uh, they were called exo fighters and you do get a glimpse of each of the exo suits to me It looked like it was exo suits as in classes class based system multiplayer PVE I just wrote down robot suits versus dinosaurs that that literally sums it all um, At the end. Oh, it was also announced as a new IP for Capcom finally I think a lot of people were expecting a return of is it dino crisis that Capcom had developed previously that a lot of people are screaming for uh, something new or at least a remake of it. At the end of the trailer, they did mention a new Exo Fighter coming in. Uh, as the character was sitting down, I just noted that it seemed like they were, I don't know, something Dead Space related to me. It's something about their outfit or their suit. It just looked like... I can't think of the character's name, but some character or just some suit from the Dead Space series, so perhaps a collaboration 
possibly as a new character. Uh, we will, yeah, the, the game is due to release next year, so I'm sure we'll be hearing and seeing more of it, especially if it's a Capcom IP, uh, a fresh new one from them. We'll be seeing more in the coming months. Reveal number two, Ghostwire Tokyo, set to release in two weeks, March 25th. First person combat and exploration game set in Tokyo, if you couldn't guess, uh, involving the supernatural. And there was some more gameplay footage release. I, I, I did admire the setting, the cityscape looks really cool in the nighttime with all the neon lights. Particularly, I wanted to focus attention on the monster designs. Some of them look incredible. It reminds me a lot of some work by Junji Ito, if you're familiar with that artist. I, I have not read much, I've seen some things, and it, there's just so many similarities. It makes me think that somehow they were, I don't know, consulted or at least referenced and inspired by. But it looks very cool. There was a little bit more about the story, but ultimately it was just more gameplay footage. Next up, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, due to release March 18, so not even two weeks from now, it will be released. They did at the end of the trailer announce that there is a new demo out for PS5 owners to try. It was more gameplay more uh <laughs> it's just more gameplay more abilities uh, you do see the main character dressed in something a little bit different so some different armor i'm sure uh and there was particularly for me the highlight was a fight against a marlboro type enemy it was just more more gameplay more details that's about it the next thing that came up forespoken due october 11th this year more gameplay footage i you see a lot more of the main character i i've <laughs> i've wrote down and encircled elemental gymnastics <laughs> it, it was a lot of the character just jumping around a, a lot of acrobatic uh movements there was a scene where she was doing uh, multi jumps not even double jumps just multi jumping and a scene where she was surfing it seemed like she was surfing on ice powers across uh water and the um, she was doing backflips mid-air, mid-combat probably. But ultimately for me, I was very curious about uh, more of the gameplay. And you see the character using lots of elemental powers. There was a flame, I wrote down flame sword, thunder whip, or perhaps wind whip. And again, the ice surfing. There was a, a scene where she was creating kind of like a wind vortex that damaged enemies in an AoE style. So the combat looked really interesting to me, and then there was the kind of parkour-like acrobatics that she was, uh, that they were showing off for her. The next game announced, or the next game revealed, took me by surprise. <laughs> I don't know if I just have been out of the loop and I haven't been paying that much attention, or if this was a complete surprise to everybody. Uh, Gundam Evolution. 6v6 multiplayer pvp later this year so it, it hasn't there hasn't been a true announcement but they have uh, announced a network test in the spring of this year for us and japan players so something to look forward to if you are interested they did highlight three game modes um there was point capture which sounds to me like capture the flag Domination, which sounds like King of the Hill, and Destruction, which just sounds like uh, kill as much as possible. I might be a bit out of date with the PvP, uh, you know, gun playing terms there, so hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Graphics were nice. There was a, a bit of, a, if you're not familiar with Gundam, it's uh, a whole bunch of giant robots fighting each other. That's basically it. There was some show, uh, some display of different weaponry, and there were nice effects, nice neon lighting on some of the attacks. Uh, and there were di certainly different robots and different weapons, uh, including the iconic one from the, uh, why can't I think of it, Gundam Wing. The iconic one used by the main character is in present in there. Uh, ultimately though, I was surprised, but I, I didn't have anything to look forward to in that sense. It was billed as 6v6 PvP is what you're looking at for this one. Interesting, uh, you know, robots fighting. I, I can dig it, but I also it was kind of forgettable, to be honest. The, the fact that the Gundam name was attached to it was really what set the flag off for me. So that that's about it though. Now if we're talking about throwbacks, the next game, <laughs> the next reveal is a, a heck of a throwback. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Kawabunga Collection 
set to release this year. No, no specific date yet. It's just a classic, a collection of classic games in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise from previous. Uh, previous releases, and I I did see Turtles in Time, which was my favorite. I also saw Tournament Fighters, which was the one that I did not know existed. It was a fighting game featuring the Ninja Turtle characters, uh, but ultimately it was just a, a you know classics bundle. Nothing more to write home other than that it's Ninja Turtles, Kawabanga, and lots of pizza. Next game announced, I have it as number seven. Gigabash due this year, uh, later this year quoted, it is, uh, they described it as a kaiju brawler, and that certainly was, uh, you do see the scene as it opens, it's large monsters uh, on top of a, a city, and they're just fighting each other. I did pick that it seemed to be four players, and it's an overhead fighter, and I was trying to see if I had any memory of any game that it could be comparable to. Um, Rampage in the sense that it involved monsters, but instead of destroying the city, you're destroying each other. And again, it was four players, so it must be couch co-op possible. I was only thinking Gang Beast, but that's certainly not a fair comparison at all because the monsters do have abilities and powers it it's it just i wrote down colorful kaijus <laughs> uh, so the designs are interesting but other than that that that's that's a kaiju brawler gigabash later this year the next reveal threw me for a loop i saw a blue butterfly in the beginning uh, in the intro, and I just thought, oh wow, more Persona, excellent. I was so thrown off. <laughs> because apparently a blue butterfly is not trademarked to the Persona or the Shin Megami Tensei series at all. It was for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R. I did see the R in the title and thinking maybe it means remake or remaster. I, I don't know if that's actually a part of the title, but the R was very significant for me. Uh, due early fall of this year, it is. They, I did hear them say that it was a fan favorite game to return or making a bizarre return. And I did have to look up the original game. I, I know nothing about the franchise, the comic, or the game itself. There was a game released in 2013, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. It looked the same to me. Same cell shaded character, same kind of, it's a fighting game. I did pick up in this trailer that it seemed tag team based, like in the Marvel vs. Capcom and Tekken Tag Tournament. Uh, that's Probably the only thing I've noted, uh, and at the end it does announce 50 playable characters to be continued. So potentially it'll have at least 50 playable characters. The next game, Trek to Yomi, due in spring of this year. I wrote down, it's a, a black and white samurai side-scroller type game. I wrote down Ghost of Tsushima plus perhaps Limbo or Inside. Uh, and I, I'm thinking more Ghost of Tsushima for the setting and for the combat style, but Limbo and Inside, due to the fact that it's a side-scrolling platformer, I, I don't think there'll be puzzle, much puzzles involved in this game. Uh, it'll just be more combat-oriented. And I, that was a surprise to me. I do like the art style, black and white. It, it is very significant. It, there was no kind of like red blood, for example. It was just purely black and white. Uh, and... Yeah, it, it very much reminded me a lot of Limbo and Inside, but with Samurais. Of significant note to me, well, the, I, I put down two big things for me. At the end, they did list the actors and actresses involved in the project. None of the names look familiar to me, but I'm sure if you were involved, if, if any of the names look familiar to you, you're probably very excited about it. And if so, that's good. That I was I was very surprised that they did that. Uh, also, I did notice that uh, Devolver was involved in the production of the game. Devolver, I, I've kept my eye on them a lot. They release some very interesting games, just interesting stories or interesting gameplay. They embrace very exciting and unique games. So to see Devolver being involved in this project, uh, to me, is enough enough to get me interested. Um, 
So yes, Trek to Yomi due spring of this year. The next game, the next reveal, number 10, <laughs> as I wrote down, more Returnal. It is the Ascension update, they call it Ascension Update 3.0, do March 22nd so a mere two weeks or not even two weeks away is a they did announce it as a free update to Returnal which is PS5 exclusive and it does include two-player co-op in campaign you do see some scenes of two of uh, I guess the main character two of them uh, combating and shooting the enemies down at the beginning and then there is some talk about the main character going into she said it was an endless tower and they did announce it as a survival mode uh, included in the update and lore wise it just sounds like i mean i i did not play returnal so it sounds to me like it's certainly perhaps more a chance for more narrative a chance for more of the story as to what's going on in this game uh set in this endless tower a survival mode i don't think it's multiplayer in the survival mode however i think it's just multiplayer campaign only but i'm sure we'll see more details of it it, very imminently if it's set to release free in two weeks so that was returnal ascension update 3.0 the next two games i will say the next two games it, it kind of left me falling it, I, I felt a bit uninspired by it um and it it was both they were both square enix properties so the uh, reveal number 11 it was the Dio Field Chronicle, or perhaps a Dio Field Chronicle, they didn't properly announce the title. It did say in the trailer that it was not actual gameplay, but what I'm seeing is that it's a tactics-like, strategy-like game with 3D anime style, which is, you know, if you like it, you like it. Uh, there was, in the middle of the trailer, there was a moment where it seemed like a character summoned something that akin to Bahamut, uh, the Bahamut dragon from the Final Fantasy games, and it breathed damaging fire against, uh, like, over the field. And uh, in instinctively, for with all of those involved, I immediately thought Final Fantasy Tactics. And watching more of the trailer, especially rewatching it again, I it less like Final Fantasy Tactics, more similar to Fire Emblem, or perhaps even XCOM 2, if anyone's played either of those games. I'm seeing that it's certainly it's strategy based, and it's military, fantasy, all, all of anime, but I, it seems like gameplay might be more similar to XCOM as opposed to Final Fantasy Tactics, or even to, uh, it might be, yeah, it might be more similar to XCOM 2 in terms of gameplay. But again, they they did announce uh, it was listed as not actual gameplay footage, so there might be more to see. The final reveal to the state of play is another Square Enix property, Valkyrie Elysium. I did think that the character design seemed familiar to me. I, I, I think it was a, an older Val Valkyria Chronicles, perhaps, from literally PlayStation PS1 days. It, it seems to ring a bell, but it did not look... It, it certainly did not seem like it was the same kind of entity. A uh, female protagonist of Valkyrie action RPG, a uh, third-person hack-and-slash with magic and skills, and I, <laughs> I wrote down, and I think... Did I circle it? I did. It was Devil May Cry inspired, which... There are scenes of her, you know, hacking and slashing, and then there's another scene where she was collecting gems, and it, it just, it, it felt, again, it felt Devil May Cry action adventure to me with fantasy elements and something about Valkyrie and the Ragnarok, uh, all of that lore, which is, is interesting for sure, but it ultimately, it, it didn't hold anything for me, it just, it felt very, um, forgettable it, it was not too memorable other than the fact that it was uh valkyrie related and it looked like something i had already seen that might actually be a part of the problem too because it doesn't feel new it feels like i may have already seen it at the end of the trailer it does show you do see a scene of a female dragoon i wrote down female dragoon with a halberd walking in and it seems like she is a mysterious character and again she seems familiar to me, but I don't know why. She seemed very 
kind of related to the Final Fantasy series, so maybe another collaboration uh, of properties. But I, it, she was familiar, but not completely memorable. And that ultimately, if I could sum it up, it's the final, the final reveal of the state of play for this game, Valkyrie Elysium, due this year. Familiar, but not memorable. I, I guess is the takeaway for that. So yeah, I that was. That was this year's state of play, March 9th, 2022. I marked it down as 21 minutes long, it, and that's quite literally they tampered expectations by saying it was only going to be about 20 minutes. Fair enough. No news about hardware updates. On a good note, I was very happy to see a new Capcom IP, although I'm not interested in it. It was something new. That's good for Capcom, something new in Exoprimal. It looks quite literally very different from anything that Capcom has done and I, I'm having a hard time kind of placing any any IPs that they have done that are similar to it so I'm looking forward to seeing what that will be if if not really to play it just to see how they do their version of uh, what I wrote down as Left 4 Dead with dinosaurs and robots or well dinosaurs and exosuits. More news on the new expected game, so Ghostwire Tokyo, Stranger of Paradise, uh, Forspoken is very welcome. And then pretty much Returnal update is cool. I have yet to play the I have yet to play that game, so I can't really remark on how excited I am for that. The new IPs announced for Square Enix. Nothing, nothing for me. <laughs> Excite, exciting that it's new, but not excited, and it's not new enough for me to remain excited. So, f for me, stay to play for this, for this one. Middle ground, middle ground. Nothing too uh, earth shattering or wave starting. It was just, it was just a kind of check-in and i did see in some of the comments that <laughs> the usual you couldn't have sent this by email that this couldn't have been an email conversation and it was interesting in the thought that like yeah all of these i chalked it down as, or scribbled it down as 12 announcements and how much of them could technically have just been i don't know a twitter announcement as opposed to a whole event but regardless for me i'm just excited that there was another event with more news and especially new games. That's always something to look forward to. The big surprise for me certainly was the new Capcom IP, uh, Exoprimal. And it, if anything, I am more hyped for Ghostwire Tokyo. I am slightly more interested, just slightly more interested in Forspoken. And that's about it. <laughs> there was not much else. Uh, not much else in this one that kept me going. So, yeah, that was my reaction. Well, that does it. That was James and Games reacting to the PlayStation State of Play. That's really hard to say if you think about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I feel like this was a bit unstructured for me. I, I have not done a reaction video. I've never done a reaction video, so I was not sure if it was just going to be rambling or if me reading notes was going to make any difference. But I hope to have the opportunity to do more. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Uh, I'll tell you, I had to rewatch the event a couple times. Uh, the first time, it was just a whole bunch of scribbly notes. If I could show you, I just it's um, it spans like multiple pages. I just my hands did not stop, and I, I did obviously pay attention as much as I could. But at the same time, I was writing, so lots of notes. I watched it a second time just to get some more follow up in case I missed anything, uh, any announcements, or just any other thoughts I had. And then the final time hands down, <laughs> uh, hands off, just watch the darn event. Uh, that's what I said. I always wanted to do a reaction video to the state of play. I I've been a PlayStation fanboy forever and ever.